Hi there guys and welcome to another Train Sim 2017 video. Today's video is a little bit special. As you can probably guess, this is the Armstrong Powerhouse Class 43 Enhancement Pack. Uh, you are seeing it for the first time as I. Uh, I haven't had a play with this yet at all. I've actually had a really massive failure of my uh, Train Sim folder. So everything has been reinstalled. So my settings aren't exactly how they should be and everything, but I really wanted to get this video up and do a little bit of a first look video with you anyway. So <clears throat> this is on the DPS uh, Edinburgh Glasgow extension. So we're starting at Carstairs and we're just heading down to Haymarket. Uh, no, actually Waverley. Um, for a quick sort of 20, 25 minute, half hour journey. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the train. We'll walk down and have a look at the, the livery and stuff. So this is the pre-2016 uh, network rail. HST set, so it's the high speed measurement train HSMT uh, uh, or NMT. So there's something you already you can hear the compressor. That's pretty cool. At the moment it's shut down, um, but we will uh, go and have a look. Now, of course, the interiors of the coaches are just going to be the same because they're the same models of the Mark 3s anyway, but there is uh, <coughs> some slight differences. I've, I've seen a couple of one of, wrong shirt on for the time of year there mate um, a couple of people have been complaining that, that, that some of the textures aren't right and stuff. I'll be honest with you <coughs> as long as it looks about correct to me I'm not going to spot it uh, I'm going to see if I can change my brightness. I'm not sure if I can but even though that isn't a tunnel it still looks a bit dark for me no We'll continue on. I'll use YouTube to brighten it up if it if it needs it. So it's the buffered end. Uh, yeah, as I was saying, as long as the delivery looks cool to me, I'm usually pretty happy. I'm not. I couldn't tell you the difference between the pre and post 2016 NMT uh, if it's a livery change or whatnot. I don't know. But uh, we'll get in the cab, start her up, and have a look. So I've already had a quick play with the headlights. Uh, as you can see, we've got marker lights and selectable headlights. For the first time in the HST, we will be able to have correct headlights. Um, just that alone, I'm happy with. <laughs> I know it sounds daft. Like I said in my previous HST video, I drove this train to death on the Oxford Paddington route. Uh, so I just stopped driving it. Uh, I don't even know if the Oxford Paddington route installed. Uh, I would very, very rarely drive the HST. The only time I have done was for the Valenta sound pack and when I first got the MTU sound pack. So let's get going. So what new features does it come with? I'm not going to go through all the liveries with you because you can all get those on the Tinsel webs. Just go to the AP website and have a look and see what you get. Uh, I'll tell you there are 13 of them. So you get detailed internal and external audio. We've already heard the compressor which is quite cool. Accurate acceleration and braking physics. So ATP, this lovely little thing here. I'm not going to go into it too much in this video. Um, I do know how it works, but I'm going to do it on another video, probably one of the scenarios. Uh, automatic train protection. We've been through electronic train supply, so ETS, which is here. So you can turn that on and off. That's usually done from the rear cab. So we'll do that on the start procedure. Uh, driver vigilance device. T -t 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 not clicky down there but it is here um, drive minor appliance there not clickable actually but you can do that with Y um, for some reason the DRA is about the only thing I use the actual clicks for and the buttons but uh, yeah it's quite odd four step reverse so it's not just forward neutral and reverse anymore so you've got off uh, I haven't actually turned it on to, to see yet uh, individual lights were spoken about. Cooling fan simulation. We're going to try and get a look at that. Subtle exhaust effects. Power car number displayed inside cab. Detailed headlight, mark light, textures. Is is it? Where's that detailed in the cab then? Or is it on the? Oh, there. Forty-three oh six two. HP data point no. Okay, so what have we got? We're completely off parking brakes even on apart from my headlights which are on and in day mode. So 
we'll start it up and get going. So we've got now I've got master key. And we've got the off position, reverse and normal. So it's engine only, neutral. Um Oh, I've just got the guards buzzer there. Which we now have back and a button sound for it. Woo! That's one of the better ones I've heard to be fair, I quite like that. Uh we've got headlights on, we've got marker lights on. DRA is on at the minute. Let's just flick to the let's start up actually. Let's start up. Quite like that. The MTU isn't the the biggest or beastiest of sounding engines in the world. But it is quite nice. Right, what did I want to do in here? We want to put the train supply on. So you can hear the rev increase. So this power car is doing 750 RPM in idle. And this one is doing 999... 1,000. So an extra 250 RPM for the ETS. Uh, let's knock off our parking brake. So you see how you have to hold it until the check switch is actually says off. Right, so headlights, this now works. So we have full control. Woo! We're in day, so we have them right inside. Uh, you also have a cab light. Which I don't know if we did on the other HST, to be fair. I don't think we did. It might have been some sort of upgrade. Uh, here's your marker light switch. Your right -hand side tail light. Left hand side tail light. And that's it for there. Uh, instrument lighting I haven't had too much of a play with, if I'm honest. Looks like it's kind of on at the minute anyway. Um, so far, so good. Just to be able to do the start-up like we've just done, just to be able to set the DRA, just to be able to have the lights in the right position, I enjoy. So, <coughs> let's get going and see what it's like to drive. It's a nice horn, I think that's different to the MTU pack that was out beforehand. So the people that are still whining about this, I think, um, I say whining, that's probably a strong word. Uh, let's call them misinformed, or um, DSD's on. Uh, e key for the DSD again, because it's strong powerhouse, so it's me hit Q. Uh, misinformed, so they they complain about a uh, either the price of enhancement packs or actually what they do. So uh, there was one guy on trade some uh, one of the forums the other day saying, "I've just paid a tenner for a livery pack because I already had the MTU sounds." Well, you didn't, and if that's what you want to think about it, fine, that's fine. That's up to you. Drivability. 
already for me has improved. The feeling is already better. The fact that I can flick some switches, the fact that this isn't just push and go, is already a lot better for, for me. Don't buy enhancement packs if you're just going to use them for deliveries. There's plenty of free ones out there. You don't need to do that. Don't just buy them for AI. Because you just you won't like it. You just feel a bit dumb by it. Buy an enhancement pack if you sit in a cab and drive the train. Buy an enhancement pack if you like to press buttons, if you like to, a simulation of the real thing. If you don't, if you drive with a HUD, don't buy them. If you don't know the procedures but want to learn them, buy it. Buy a manual. Look at the manual. Arms for Powerhouse's manuals are pretty good. They do set up procedures and all sorts for most things, so they're very detailed. You can learn. In uh, the flight sim world, they have study aircraft, which are basically as identical as you can get to the... Well, I say as identical as you get, that's a bit of a crap word to use. Um, they're as good as you can get, as close to the real thing as you can get, systems-wise. The systems are pretty easy to simulate on computers when they're just normal systems like we use on trains ATP a, a, do you know what I mean that would have been a bugger to script but actually it's pretty simple to use there's videos on YouTube which will show you how to actually how the real one works and this is incredibly similar in fact it is a simulation of it so yeah if you want a train that you drive with a HUD go and get some of the rail simulator classic stuff get some of the is that what they call it now train sim classic it's basically like the easy stuff or put your train in easy mode but don't buy an Armstrong powerhouse pack and then complain that it's too complicated don't buy an Armstrong powerhouse pack and complain, complain it's just sounds we, yeah, that's what it is it's a sound pack or an enhancement pack enhancement packs add things into the cabs physics upgrades things like that. I know some of the sound packs have that too but the enhancement packs are the way forward with that, aren't they? So no, I don't feel done at all. In fact, I'm really enjoying this and can't wait to give it a bit of a thrash. And there's a little secret on the front of this which I really want to look at and I haven't done yet. So this actually wasn't in any of the videos, I don't think, or I just haven't looked close enough. Um, we will have a little run with ATP and I'll read you about it, how it works and stuff. So where was it? So can you see the wiper on that camera there? That's cool. That's cool. You see now that? I don't know what that took to program. No idea. But I like the idea of it. Am I probably ever going to sit outside and look at it any more than this time? Probably not. But it's cool to have it there. It's just the little touches. The other thing I saw somebody complaining about was the fact that they'd removed a passenger view. Nope. So you've now got a heads out passenger view, which I quite like. I won't use it very often, I don't use the actual passenger view uh, very often. But I'll be honest, I'll probably use this one more than I would the other one.
and we're all different. And see when you go on to like forums or Facebook to, to, to complain about something, just have a think in your head. And then write, I feel this, my opinion is this, not this is crap, I've been conned. This is meant to be quality. Well, good for you. And I know you'll all moan and there'll be some of us that'll go, oh, AP fanboy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a fan of this guy's work. It, it enhances the simulator for me. Anything that makes the driving more realistic is a bonus for me. If Joe Bloggs from down the road started making stuff that made it more realistic, I'd be a fan of it. It's like because some people like it, people find it cool to dislike AP stuff sometimes. Which I suppose you get with everything, didn't you? People tend to moan about Apple products because people like them. Um, it's quite a strange thing. I'm enjoying this, this is nice. The sounds are, are brilliant. I'm sitting here with my headphones on and it's just the rumble's definitely there. You feel how do I describe this? You feel heavy. The train feels heavy, it's responding like it's heavy. Which is quite cool. I'm impressed with this. about accelerating over this hill just here. It's coming down again in a minute. <coughs> so what else have we got? So the battery condition indicator. Got a fire alarm test button. something I don't usually do in videos, let's give you as a line side view of it.
mean, maybe I'd have liked to have seen the cab textures improved. Yeah. I mean, the, the actual lettering, like the letters are, are definitely been improved. I don't think you can actually read any of that on the old ones. Feels powerful. What's going on? So I think I've hit Z by mistake. Any RPM or amps? It seems like my engine is cut out. At this point, I'm pretty sure it's driver error. <coughs> you guys could be able to just flip the video back a little bit and go, oh yeah, you hit it then with your finger or whatever. It's something that I've done a few times before. Let that rev up again, so that was my fault. I've obviously hit the Z. I don't know if you should be able to cut the engine out from when the reverse is in forward. Let's just have a look, can you? No. And it has to be Control Z to shut it down. 
That is possible, I nicked that. So we'll shut it down and start it back up again. I think uh, the MTU engines don't like being started up and shut down at all. I think they only have so many... I think there's a limit on how many startups and shutdowns they can do before overhaul or something. I'm sure I read about it somewhere. I'll try and find where it was. So, yes, you can shut the engine down. I suppose, yeah, if you needed to. So it was an emergency. I don't really know, I'm sort of just talking like I do there, but I don't, I don't really. Okay. I can't see an exhaust, but that might be my settings more than anything. As I said, I've had to redo, uh, reinstall. You can hear the traction motors. That's pretty weird. like that. Yeah, I like this. It's a good buy. And if you already had the uh, MTU pack already, it's seven ninety nine for a limited time. I think it ends the end of January. Wasn't looking. a bit retro with a three-tone horn at the moment. The 
three hits on a two-tone horn. They don't seem to do it as much these days. It used to be like the only horn I heard as a kid. It was eh, 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 pretty much constantly. Nowadays you get one of those two. So one thing I have noticed, I think the DSD is a bit like the 91 where it's going to go off, go off all the time, it's not linked to the controls, so it doesn't matter if you've moved the controls a certain amount of time, the DSD will go off. Don't quote me on that, but that's what it does seem to feel like, because I've been sitting on the brakes and the DSD's been coming on just as I've put the brakes on, or a couple of seconds after I've taken them off. Because usually you'd expect the DSD to be reset any movement of the power or brake controller uh, and it hasn't and it'd only be if the controls hadn't been moved within a set period of time usually about a minute you saw I just put the brake on the DSD came on afterwards Last DST came on about 12.25, I'm sure you guys will uh, correct me on that if I'm wrong, because I looked at it a bit after. So I see at about 13.20, 13.13.25, we should get DST again. every minute regardless of input. Okay, I can deal with that. It's not my favourite, but it's obviously realistic. And as I said, anything to make driving more realistic. It says three gritted to teeth. I don't really remember this, this end of this route. I did a Dusty Vindman scenario uh, down this part of this route.
Is this coming through high market? Tunnel occlusions. Oh, there we are. Just want to see what the tunnel sounds a bit like. It is a bit dark in here, I need to um, sort out the brightness. I didn't even see that 20 there. I knew there was one coming up as well. Well then, yeah, I'm very pleased with it. Conclusion is a definite purchase. Uh, no question about it, really. I've really enjoyed that run. Really enjoyed it. Um, as per usual, thanks ever so much for uh, watching this, and uh, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Um, the more shares this video gets, the more pennies I get. I, there's the emergency brakes going on as well. Nice sound to hear at the end. Um, the more pennies I get at the end of the month, which means I can buy more DLC to make more videos. Um, it does help. So again, thank you very much. And I'll see you guys for another HST scenario very soon.